Hello everybody and welcome back to more political chatter. In this video we will be talking about Mike Pence and how he has uh, today suspended his campaign for president. Very interesting stuff going on in the presidential race right now. Mike Pence, the former vice president who was once considered a serious contender for this Republican nomination is now out months before the Iowa caucus, not even that close to the caucus um, or the New Hampshire primary or the Nevada caucus or South Carolina primary, uh, whatever, the early states. He didn't even make it close when he was a serious contender in the beginning. So Mike Pence um, announced his campaign uh, in, in early June when all of these candidates were joining the race. He was one of the later ones to join in. Most candidates joined in um, April, May, you, um, mostly. Mike Pence joined a little later in June, but still in the mix. And he was polling, he was consistently the third place candidate. Um, it was Trump, of course, Ron DeSantis, of course, and Mike Pence in third. This was consistent. Um, when Nikki Haley announced in February, sometimes she claimed uh, third, but um, soon enough, Mike Pence was able to take that back. Um, looking at these polls, um, I believe, I mean, I assume Mike Pence is, yeah, uh, Mike Pence is the, is this third place guy right here, the dark red, the brownish kind of color. But, um, but yeah, he was third, but he wasn't that close. Um, but he was polling at around 10%. Um, and then he's, you know, he started to dip, whatever. And even when he announced his candidacy in, uh, right around here, he still continued to decline. He did not see a boost like Nikki Haley saw when she announced, or... I don't know, she was the only one who got a boost, honestly, from her announcement. Um, but it has just been going down and down and downhill for Mike Pence since the beginning. And this did come as a surprise to a lot of people. I mean, Mike Pence is Mike Pence. He was the former vice president of the United States. Any vice president um, who... it. And, you know, any vice president who runs for president in the next election is um, is considered a very serious contender. I mean, um, I don't even, it doesn't happen often for a reason. Uh, that is a very high position. This is not a senator or a representative or some other congressman. This is the former vice president, um, a very high-ranking official who has massive name recognition, who people in the party know, who, and for Mike Pence's case, is very uh, friendly and familiar with the party establishment, very friendly with them. He should have uh, been able to make this campaign last, but he didn't. Um, a lot of it was due to money, and we are going to talk about uh, how Mike Pence really is the start of the fall of these other candidates. Of course, we have had four other um, candidates drop out before this, but none were none were major contenders. Francis Suarez, Will Hurd, Corey Stapleton, Perry Johnson, and Larry Elder. Sorry, that's five candidates before um, Mike Pence. He's our sixth. Um, but these five, we're not going to take any votes away from the primary. Them dropping out makes no difference. But Mike Pence is a serious um, person, a someone who really wanted to be president, someone who was at, you know, usually four or five percent. That could actually make a little difference in this primary um, by him dropping out. But, um, but I will say that when we compare, you know, or when we talk about the fact that he's the beginning of the end of all the other candidates, uh, serious candidates at least, I will say that he ran out of money. His issue was money. When you compare their fundraising numbers, I think we have it on this Wikipedia page. Um, when you compare his fundraising numbers, they were abysmal. Um, do I know why? 
No, I don't know why Pence did so horrible, abysmal when it comes to fundraising. Uh, more so just at the end of his campaign. He started off fine, but um, when you need the end of his campaign, it just he just um got destroyed. Um, looking at cash on hand, he had one point one million dollars at the end of the camp at the end of his campaign. To compare, Donald Trump has thirty seven point five million dollars, and he has raised a lot more than that, sixty million. Uh, Tim Scott, who's a senator. I mean, we have to keep in mind that this guy is a former vice president. Tim Scott is a senator. Mike Pence raised one point one million. Tim Scott raised thirteen point three million. It's incredible, um, really, how little faith donors have in Mike Pence for whatever reason. Mike Pence just wasn't able to do it when it comes to money. He just wasn't able to get donors. I don't know why. Um, and that was the end of his campaign. Um, Vivek Ramaswamy, four million dollars. Keep in mind, no one knew who Vivek Ramaswamy was. You know, until a month after he announced his campaign, when he started getting momentum, Mike Pence is a former vice president. Nikki Haley at eleven million dollars. Remember, she's a former ambassador, former governor. Ron DeSantis, twelve million dollars. Only a governor compared to a former vice president has twelve times his cash on hand. Chris Christie has three times more than three times. Um, the amount of money that Pence had when he announced, when he dropped out of his campaign. Uh, Doug Burgum has double. Um, only, Ryan Binkley only has $11,000. Oh my, how is he running a campaign? That's amazing. Um, but anyway, he, how did he raise 7 million? Okay. Okay, that's insane. How has he spent 7 million? That's an even better question. Anyway video not about Ryan Binkley, it's about um, Mike Pence. So, yeah, for whatever reason, Mike Pence just wasn't able to get the donors. So, I don't want to, you know, say that just because Pence dropped out all of these other big names like uh, Ron DeSantis, Nikki Haley, Tim Scott are going to fall very soon, not until the primary or whatever. Um, I will say that I do see Tim Scott making it to the Iowa caucus. I would say I do see, um, I see Tim Scott and Nikki Haley getting to South Carolina. I see Ron DeSantis probably dropping out after, dropping out after New Hampshire. Um, whatever. So, I don't want to say that they're going to drop out before the primary, but Mike Pence is the first to fall, and people will follow in his footsteps, because I'm saying if it's not Pence then it can't be Tim Scott, then it can't be Ron DeSantis or Nikki Haley or whoever, because they're all the same, honestly. They're all coming from the same voter base. Um, so if it's not Mike Pence, I don't see any path to victory for any of the others. And I know it's not even a competitive primary. I really don't know why I'm talking about this, I guess. Uh, but all these other candidates, I mean, you know, also... We have to consider the fact that Mike Pence, in his early state polling in the recent weeks or months, has just been disastrous. Um, he's at like 3% in, or, oh, we have it right here, 3.5% in Iowa. In Iowa, which I'm sure when he announced his candidacy was the state he was betting on because we have white, evangelical voters, Christian, whatever. Um, Mike Pence is running a religious, here he was running, a religious-based campaign. He was betting on Iowa. Tim Scott is betting on Iowa. Um, so when you fall from 10% or more, I think we have it here. Okay, I guess he was never going to, well, wait, what? Anyway, let's just say 10. You know, when you were in third place at 9, 8, 7%, and you're falling, even after you announce your candidacy, you're falling to 3.5% in Iowa. You're falling behind Perry Johnson in New Hampshire. You, you're getting like 1% in polls in South Carolina, 2% in Pennsylvania right here. It, it, there's just no path to victory. 
Um, and that's the case for many of these candidates, honestly, because uh, Nikki Haley is on the rise. She's an exception. But Tim Scott is losing money, is losing donors, just like Mike Pence. And he's falling in polls now. Um, Tim Scott was at 11. At his peak, he was at 11. At 9. At 13. And now, in Iowa, he's only falling. He's at 6% in Iowa. He's doing terrible in New Hampshire. He's at like 2%. So the fact of the matter is, just like Mike Pence and all these other candidates, Chris Christie, Doug Burgum, Ace Hutchinson, Ryan Binkley, um, when you um, only see yourself falling, even if you're staying, if you're sa- staying steady nationwide, but you're losing these percentage points, um, these critical percentage points in Iowa, New Hampshire, Nevada, South Carolina, and donors are leaving you for the case of Mike, Pe- of Mike Pence, obviously, and then Chris Christie, um, and Tim Scott, and all these other candidates, Ace Hutchinson, uh, Ace Hutchinson's campaign manager just left him, just left the campaign. Um, when you see yourself only falling in all these early states, there's just no path to victory, and it's as simple as that. There is just nothing, when you look at it, that can save you. So it makes sense that Mike Pence withdrew from this race, and it's only the beginning. Um, we could see Asa Hutchinson, I mean, we probably will see Asa Hutchinson drop out before Iowa. We will probably see, um, I mean, Ryan Binkley is just in it, you know, for the for the fun, I think. Um, so he'll probably stay in for a while. But um, Doug Burgum, we could see drop out before um, before Iowa. Uh, we could see Chris Christie. I mean, well, Chris Christie's going to last until New Hampshire. We could see Vivek Ramaswamy drop out before Iowa. Um, I mean, we could see Ron DeSantis drop out before Iowa. Um, but the other thing that you've got to consider is the debates. If you're losing money, losing these percentage points in polls, and then you have to put your focus into making the debates because you know making the debates is the only thing that could save you from this, it's a struggle. Uh, especially when the requirements rise each time. I mean, if you're struggling so hard like Asa Hutchinson or Doug Burgum or Chris Christie, to get into that first debate at 1%, then you are going to have a very hard time getting into the 3% debate. And if you make that, then you have no shot at getting into the 4% debate. And, you know, once you reach, and so this goes for so many of these candidates, once you reach the 4% debate, which is coming up on, what, November 8th? November, or sorry, yeah, November 9th, I think. Um... November 7th, November 8th, November 9th, one of those dates, I think. Uh, and you need the 75,000 donors, too, which is what Mike Pence struggles with. If you're not getting that, it, and the, the requirements are only increasing, and you didn't make the second debate, whatever, you know, Ace Hutchinson is dropping out, Ron Binkley, Doug Burgum is dropping out, Mike Pence is dropping out, Tim Scott is looking like it's he's not going to make the next debate. He could drop out. Um... So it's very interesting, uh, and it's, it's just such a terrible primary. Um, I mean, Donald, it's as simple as Donald Trump just has this on lock. I mean, there's just no hope for any other candidates, and whatever. It's it's over, you know. It's, it's over. So thank you all for watching this video. Hope you all enjoyed. Um, it'll be very interesting to see. How this primary plays out. Who will drop out next? Let me know in the comments. Who do I think is... Wow, thank you for asking. Who I think uh, will drop out next? I would have to say... Ace Hutchinson. I know we've been saying it for a while, but... um, With his campaign manager gone, I think it's going to be Asa who drops out. But who would have thought Mike Pence would drop out before Asa Hutchinson... Uh, before Doug Burgum, before Ryan Binkley, I mean, just insane. So yeah, thank you all for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you all next time.